easy to make announcements about projects, Mr. Speaker. Andrew Shear has a lot of questions about this investment bank. It's going to be a lot very important coming forward as we pull out of this COVID recession. And um, we're not getting a lot of answers except that um, he received a large bonus and the they're not telling yeah, you, you got to see this, watch Canadian this. The Canadian Infrastructure Bank in June of 2017, they gave this bank $35 billion. They appointed a CEO in May of 2018. The CEO left on April 20th of 2020. The Prime Minister gave the departing CEO a massive bonus, a bonus so big he's afraid to tell Canadians what it was. So a simple question for the Prime Minister. How many projects did the Canadian Infrastructure Bank complete since its inception. You're right, Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, we created the Canadian In Infrastructure Bank to leverage private capital along with uh, public money to create uh, more projects because we knew that investing in infrastructure for communities, uh, for growth, uh, for Canadians was significantly important. They've invested in a number of large projects that are underway. Uh, we know infrastructure investments will make Canada better with this scheme to build more infrastructure projects. So how many projects have been completed? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we know that building infrastructure is a way to build stronger futures for Canadians. That's exactly what we're doing. Mr. Speaker, when people get a bonus for doing a job, it's usually because they exceeded expectations. How many projects have been completed from the Canadian Infrastructure Bank? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, there are a number of large projects underway and more to come. The Canadian Infrastructure Bank has an operating cost of approximately $50 million a year. What has the Canadian taxpayer received for that $50 million a year? In other words, how many projects have been completed? The Prime Minister can't answer a simple question. How many projects have been completed? You're right, Honourable Prime Minister. Over 10 years under Stephen Harper, Conservatives underinvested in infrastructure. Therefore, over the past five years, we have made significant investments in infrastructure that have created jobs and growth for Canadians. Mr. Scheer. The previous Conservative government invested in ports and bridges and roads and airports. This Canadian Infrastructure Bank has taken $35 billion from Canadian taxpayers. They've just paid the outgoing CEO a massive bonus. A bonus is usually given for a job well done, exceeding expectations. So far, it looks like the Canadian Infrastructure Bank has completed zero projects. Has that exceeded the Prime Minister's expectations? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, investing in infrastructure is a way of creating jobs now, but also creating growth and prosperity into the future. That's why we moved forward uh, with an innovative idea that is going to create more infrastructure across this country that Canadians need. Mr. Scheer. An innovative idea that protects the investment of wealthy hedge funds and puts all the risks on the backs of taxpayers. Now, he says this is an innovative idea. So how many projects have been built by this innovative idea? The right honourable Prime Minister. There are a number of projects underway and more to come. We know that investing in infrastructure, investing in our communities is a better way of building the future uh, than cuts that Conservatives have done for years. Here. What actually improves the quality of life in our communities is for projects to be completed. It's easy to make announcements about projects, Mr. Speaker, but this bank has been in operation for almost three years now. So once again, if the answer is zero, why doesn't he just say zero? How many projects has the Infrastructure Bank completed? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, there are a number of projects underway across the country. These are things uh, that take many years to do, but we know that investing in infrastructure, unlike what the Conservatives have always done, is the way to build a stronger future for this country. Mr. Scheer. What exactly did the CEO accomplish that warranted a massive bonus on his way out? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, setting up the Canada Infrastructure Bank is an important part of making sure that Canadians have the infrastructures they need uh, for their lives and for uh, the growth in the economy. Back to Mr. Scheer. So is the Prime Minister telling us that when he announced the Infrastructure Bank in June of 2017 that he had zero expectations for any projects built and that he was going to pay a massive payout to a CEO just for setting up a new government agency? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, investing in infrastructure is a way to grow the economy, create jobs for Canadians and create a brighter future. That's what we've been focused on. 
Well, there are a lot of questions about Hong Kong, like going forward. It looks like there's maybe a mass exodus of people now. Is Canada going to open their borders like they have for everyone else? I think we should because their freedom, you know, people's freedom. Um, and can't, MP can't once again does a stellar job focusing on the issues. And it's a great scene to go watch. 300,000 Canadian citizens in Hong Kong. Can the Minister of Immigration tell us more exactly how many Canadian citizens are currently resident in Hong Kong? The Honourable Minister. Well, the first thing I, I would like to clarify, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, those Canadians who are in Hong Kong and elsewhere have a right to return home. And uh, with regards to those who wish to uh, seek asylum, we have a robust system in place that ensures that everyone making a claim will receive a fair hearing. That will continue. Kent. Minister, how many of the Canadian citizens currently resident in Hong Kong, and I would like at least an estimate from you, uh, if you will, uh, currently hold valid Canadian passports? How many have recently uh, made ap passport applications? The Honourable Minister. Well, uh, as my honourable colleague knows, those uh, individuals who hold citizenship do have a right to return home. Uh, and of course, uh, we will continue to monitor the situation very closely to ensure that those who wish to exercise that right do so in accordance with the health and safety measures in place at the border. Mr. Kent. Committee Chair, these answers underline uh, the deficiencies of this temporary committee. Uh, with respect to the Minister, the PMO doesn't like straight answers. At least if the Standing Committee on Immigration was sitting, we would get straight answers from the Deputy Minister, Department officials and the occasional witness allowed uh, by the government. Again, does the Minister have any estimate of the number of Canadian citizens currently resident in Hong Kong? The Honourable Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, as, uh, as my honourable colleague said, that there is an estimate of approximately 300,000 who hold Canadian citizenship. Those individuals do have the right to return home. But when they exercise that right, they must do so in accordance with the travel restrictions in place to reduce the likelihood of the spread of COVID-19. Mr. Kent. To the uh, Minister, has the Department updated its emergency contingency plans in the event of worst possible outcomes in Hong Kong? Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, I know that my colleague, uh, the Minister for Global Affairs, is working very closely with our, our, our representatives uh, in that region. And in the meantime, our, our uh, officials are also providing... Now go back to Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent. Uh, Minister, last year, Canada assigned members of Global Affairs Standing Rapid Deployment Team to our Consulate General in Hong Kong to assist the mission and Canadian citizens in that territory. Is that team in place today? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank uh, the member for his important questions. Uh, we have uh, the current amount of staff that we need in Hong Kong, and as the need would be, Mr. Speaker, we will be prepared like we've done in Wuhan and like we've done when we repatriated Canadians from more than 110 countries. We can deploy these teams. They are a rapid response team, and as the case may be, we would... Back to Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, again, to the Ministry of Immigration. Uh, the supplementary estimates reveal a $200 million line item in the Department of Citizenship and Immigration for the housing of illegal border crossing asylum claimants. This would seem to be a minor down payment on much larger costs borne by Ontario and Quebec and a number of cities. The City of Toronto alone is asking for $77 million this year and years going forward to cover asylum claimant shelter costs given that the backlog of asylum claimant uh, cases is now more than 90,000 and will stretch for years. Uh, can the minister uh, answer uh, on supplementary funds beyond this very small initial payment? The Honourable Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, first, uh, I will have more to say about those estimates going forward, but I'm very proud of this government's record when it has come to partnering with cities like Toronto in the support that we're providing with regards to interim housing for refugees and asylum seekers. We will continue to build on that record going forward. Mr. Kent, a very short question. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And if I could ask a, a final question uh, to the Minister of Digital Government, can uh, 
Can the minister tell us whether she read the House of Commons cybersecurity email titled IT security alert risks with the WeChat application? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The minister in question has already made clear that this is not part of her own work. This is something else in her network, which is now out of the network. And she has clearly said that the view is... Well, what do you think about Hong Kong and this committee being basically shuttle Um Leave your comments down below, like and subscribe, and always have a good day.